Ursula's on. Ursula's on. Oh, she is? Okay, I, I didn't see that. Okay, yes, the kit to that. And then for the 13 steps, um, that would be someone introducing the video and the I think that that would be me. That would be Miss Ursula. And then the annual meeting, I have two things. I have the flyer that we will be using to um that we used before that, you know, you have all the details on there. And then Anne will come on and introduce a Black Friday special for registration with that. So I'm going to share that part and see if we have a good, um, try to leave it up here. It's just save it. Give me a minute. But um, Anne is going to come on and say, you know, there's a special. I'll share that one. I'll have the other flyer up that you're used to seeing and then um when she, when Anne when um when Galen brings on Anne about you know what's what's new for it then she'll share the information about the special unless Galen wants to share the information for the special because I know usually that's the end and you know you guys are pressed for time depending on how the show goes Excuse me. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm I'm introducing the annual meeting, and there is a special that Anne is going to share. Yeah. Or you can share it. Either right. one. Laverne can share. Laverne can share with us what it is. So we. I'm going to show special. it to you in a minute. <laughs> What's the special, Laverne? It is a Black Friday special. You for? I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm trying to get this stuff saved in here. Boom. Open that and save. Thank you. Ooh, all right. All right. This. Saturday. All right. Let me see if you'll see it now. Okay, so this is the information. It will come up right after the, um, you know, once you say uh, we have a special for you, um, it will be this that I'll put on the screen. Uh, we have a Black Friday special for the annual accountability meeting, $79 for registration, and she didn't change the time, the date on here, but it's really good through December 1st. I'm going to see if she has a new one. I just didn't see it when I went in there. My, my apologies. Okay, um, then I have, a, I, have a, I have a question while we're looking for the updated one. Yep. What if someone registered last week? <laughs> you better get that refund. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what, though? Real quick, she can check that now to see if anybody did, because I think we only had maybe, what, two or three Laverne that registered? I, I, I don't think anyone did, but um, e even if they did, what would we do? I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd like to not run, go down a rabbit hole, look yeah. at see if they did and have a decision made as to if they did. Yeah, Laverne, I don't know if you can see what I see. Uh, there is a black border on my screen on the right-hand side and across the top. What do you mean? This, hold on, let me just take a picture in case nobody else can see this. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, yeah. you see? Oh. Yeah, it's on all of them, actually. This is There's the same a thing black I border on your Zoom. Oh, it's a part of the design. No. Yeah, no. it ha this happens. Uh, I've seen this happen before with Zoom. Oh. Um, it's Laverne's Laverne's computer. Well, Laverne, I'll okay. show it. I'll send it to you because. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on my end, but um, okay. Oh, no, no I wouldn't be surprised the, wait, 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 because. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to the website, Laverne. Pull the website back up, please. Oh, I wasn't sharing. I was sharing that. Oh. <laughs> Okay, my bad. Didn't yeah, even know I was sharing. sharing. Yeah, you were sharing the website first and then you put up the Black Friday. And I just need for you to see what we see. 
because this is the same thing happened to me and um, mm -hmm. Shania and Tia. Okay, hold, 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 hold one second. Let me just get that. Now go back to the actual website. It just went away. Okay, right there, hold that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'll send these to you. But this is the same thing happened when I did the presentation for the tour. I, uh, Tia didn't see it, but we, all of us saw it. She couldn't see it on her computer, but we could all see that it was blacked out. So some kind of way we need to find out what's causing that. Like right now, you have your um, Asana open mm -hmm. and there's a black line all across the top we cannot see and all across uh, uh, the right hand side, it just blocks out everything on your screen. Are you using Chrome? Um, for what I was, for the screen I was sharing initially, yes. Okay, because usually when things grow, get weird like that, for me using Safari, um, a lot of the times they have not programmed for Safari. So Chrome tend to fix it, but if you're already using it, that's not an issue. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and what you were saying. And um, thankfully, the border is black and the flyer is black, so it's not going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, okay. On here, she, you see, I don't have the updated. She does have it on here. Can Let you download see. that? Yeah. I'm going to download this one. Okay. Oh. Okay, so so Peter, are you you want to host? I'm I'm good with that. Yes, ma'am. Um, tell so me again, who's going to do the um, thirteen steps and who's going to do the. Uh... Okay, perfect. So you host, and then we can go to. Wait a minute. Okay, Ursula's already doing the thirteen steps. Galen is going to do the annual meeting. Okay. Perfect. I had a thought about the annual meeting if it runs into a problem, as opposed to talking discount and refund. Why don't you allow them to bring a second person? You mean if a question comes for the person that paid the previous yeah. price? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's an excellent suggestion. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but at least we have a solution. So yeah. thank you for the question, Galen, and, and the response, Ursula, but that's excellent. All right, ladies and gents, yes. you, got, you see the stuff that we're going to share. I don't have anything new, but um, I will have the flyer, the right flyer in a minute before we go on. So you want to continue to share uh, uh, share screen, Laverne, uh, you want, and you want to let, let Peter can go ahead and why are you doing that? Go ahead. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about the brain. <laughs> um, I'll just, I'll, we'll try to make it really casual and have conversations. I'll inject questions. One of the questions I might um, inject is, um, what are you injecting into your brain lately? What are you injecting into your brain lately? And hopefully that will spur a conversation around reading, around um, who you're surrounding yourself with, who you're... Um, what you're watching, what you're listening to, things like that as well. So what are you injecting into your brain and why is that so important? And then of course, referencing the, the chapter 12 of the text and um, yeah, we'll make it very conversational. Hopefully um, we can um, inspire some the audience members to ask some questions around the brain, but maybe go a little bit deeper into why this is so important and how it ties to some other chapters in the text also. I think, I think this chapter does that very well. I will lead off with Ursula, Galen, and then Ms. Ann. So we're just doing just brief introductions when you first come to us, or are we um, deeply? That's a good question. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that early on. Brief introductions, and then, and then maybe even 
dive into the brain a little bit at that point. So I'll, again, I'll, I'll probably uh, start the questions around the time you introduce yourself also. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the part of this chapter that has really caught my attention this time is on page 221 where, where it talks about the greatest forces are intangible. Hmm. Okay, don't, don't talk about it right now. I'm not gonna talk about it right now. <laughs> I'm just letting well, you know. Along, along, along that thought, um, thank you for that because one of the things that came up for me, and I'm just gonna mention it, right? We can Please. talk about it later. <laughs> is an experiment that I, and I don't know where I read it, about water and the impact of thought and feelings. Um, I wish I could find where I read this. Anyway, going back to the brain and the power of it and the power of thought. And so they did this experiment uh, with negative thoughts on water, on like a glass of water. And then they examined the water and saw all this stuff. And then they had a different set of people, different glass of water that was sending these powerful, loving, kind thoughts to this water and the crystallization and the beauty that came out of that water. And so when, when um, um, Galen talked about the intangible forces, that, that just remind, all that popped in my mind as, a, mm -hmm. as an example of how powerful this brain thing is and even with me remembering that at the moment he said that, just continues to just remind me, for example, of the power of thought. I had that thought after he had that thought. It goes back to Ursula and I. A thought begets a thought of like kind. Mm -hmm. It's a great show. Okay. It's going to be great. So we can go now. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Yeah. Everybody, if anybody doesn't have any questions or anything like that, I think we're good. We'll make it very, again, very conversational and um, yeah, we get stuff. Yeah. What, what I would like, what I also would like to, to have a share. And if, if we can, if we can pull as much um, from the audience and the callers and the, and the people who are inside the Zoom chat, also on Facebook. Oh, who's doing that? Who is somebody assigned to to help us with the comments yeah. from Facebook in the chat? I know Laverne's been doing a great job of reacting to people in the chat overall. Okay. So I don't okay. know if she's going to continue that. All right. So okay. So Laverne, uh, but if we can if we can get if we can pull our audience into the conversation, not literally, but in terms of the chat and in responding. But also, if we can each, uh, from your questions, Peter, if we can each tap into sharing how, you know, how do you really use your brain, each each of us, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that may be helpful um, to the listeners to understand, you know, we're all different, we do it differently, and however they do it, the, the point is we just need to act on it and, and, and be mindful of the power of it and use it. So just a thought. Love it. Okay. Now I'm still having an issue with this um, flyer. So here is what um, we'll do. When they go to the website to do the registration, the, the registration says enter your promo code. So the promo code is IMA Black Fry. So I think we could just use that because the flyer that she's created, um, it has some metadata that is not allowing me to open up as an image. And so I will have the other flyer up and all, the per per all that new flyer is doing is letting them know to go to the website, IMA Masterminders Association. Um, internationalmasterminds.com and do their registration. When they go to the e Eventbrite link in the registration, it says enter your promo code. The promo code is I am a Black Fry. So, uh, can I, can I, can I, can I, talking yeah. about the power of the mind, I really don't like that promo code. 
um, because so many black people have been hung and fried and you're talking about having a person say those words and what's the what, word what's the word i am black fry i am a black fry like a piece oh. of chicken or french fries yeah it's not positive okay Just plan B. Plan B. Plan B is not to say it, and we can get with her to change it, Laverne, but not to say the words. Just send people to the to the um, to the site. This is on Eventbrite where the registration is, Laverne. Where those words yes, are. Yes, it is. The words is not the the code is not on Eventbrite. The code is only on the flyer, on the International Mastermind um, Facebook page. And um, oh, yeah, that can be changed. I'll reach out to her now. I just did, and she's not responded yet. So. Yeah, but sure. going to Ursula's point, uh, we mm -hmm. just send people to to register. Yeah, seems seems like there's enough letters to make the promo code just Black Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. Black Friday, yeah. Okay, you can send it to her, and I'll send it to her to Laverne. Just Black Friday. Yeah, we have time to make that change. Okay, that's it for us. What time you want us back, Laverne? 10 minutes till, please. Thank you, Peter. All right. Then. All right, folks, see you in a little bit. Thank you. All right, see you. Oh, uh, Laverne, I just need to talk to um, Doritha and Ajwa for a minute. I mean, everybody else can go. So Doritha. Yes. Ajwa. So last week, somebody um, raised their hand to speak, right? They had a, they had a question, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what we did not know is that um, in the moment, what we did not know is that when you, Doritha, went to talk to them in the green head while the show was live. Mm -hmm. um, one, of the, one of the listeners texted me and said, something's happened. We're only hearing noise. We're not hearing the show. Wow. Yeah, and let me tell you why. This is why, and, 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 and we're learning, you have to, we have to have two microphones open, not one. Okay. And this is why Aj was there and you and I, we did it with John and we didn't get any feedback. Ione and I do it, used to do it when it was just the two of us. We used to do it with our cell phones on Wednesdays. We would both have our phone open so that if one dropped off for any reason, that show would not, it would not be a problem. So, so uh, Ajwa, we need, we're going to need for you, your microphone to be open. And Doretha, if we have a question, what you can do, you can either open her microphone, you see, when you need it, or you can leave it open, okay? But as you go to the studio to click your green head and the person, the caller green head, the show won't be interrupted and then you get their question we're not going to bring them live on the show but what you can then do get their question and you can put it in the chat now i went over this with ajwa to explain to her how to do it mm -hmm. right so if okay. she had to do it or if you wanted her to do it i explained excuse me that you just click the uh the heads and what we'll do ajwa i'll show you how to do it um, when Doretha opens the studio, when everybody else come back. Oh, wait, is she here? Ajwa, are you here? I don't think so. All right, she left. Okay, I'm talking to you then, Doretha. I guess I thought I asked you and her to stay on. Wow. Okay. All right, so Doretha, this is just for okay. a minute. 
All right, so, so you just have to do it. If you have a question, right? All you okay. do is open her microphone for the question, you know, when you, when you, when you go out to the studio. Okay. And whatever the question a person has, you can then go to the chat in Zoom. You have your, uh, you have your, um, this is a question. Are you on your laptop also or just your phone and phone? I'm going to open up the laptop also. Okay. All right. So with the laptop open, then you can see, you can, you can go into the chat onto Zoom and you can mm -hmm. chat um, yes. to us. I prefer you chat to everybody. In other words, you put it in the chat okay. for mm -hmm. for the panelists yes. and everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you just say, um, uh, you know, there's a question on the on the on the uh, question from Blog Talk. Well, you know, I I don't like calling it Blog Talk. I like calling it the radio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our radio. Okay. Um, there's a question on the radio from caller, you know, um, whatever the last four numbers of the caller is. So like my number is 0184. So there's a caller mm -hmm. on the radio from caller number 0184. And the question is, now this way the, the host would tell the host, they should be, you know, one of us would say, okay, we have a question from caller number 0184. And the question is, and we'll repeat it, and I think that this will help us from not having to open that person's microphone and go through all of that, you know? Okay. okay. We would just drive them to give their question in the studio, not on the air for everybody to hear until we can better work that out. But right now, I think that that's a very good um plan B, if you will, to at least respect it. Because what I noticed last week when that call a question um, was not whatever, whatever, they dropped off. And it's got to mm -hmm. be somebody who normally comes. Do you still take a picture of the studio question, uh, studio uh, phone numbers? I write them down. But what do you do with them when you write them down, though? They're on this paper. I guess I can take a picture and send it to who? Oh, yeah, definitely take a picture and send it to IMA mastermind okay. just email and then that way we can track who's who's listening to what show i also take a picture on my phone of everybody and okay. i and and so i usually do it like two or three times because what happens people call in and sometimes they drop off mm -hmm. and then sometimes people call in late right before the show is ending they just heard about or found out about it right so uh, I, I'll do, I'll try to do two or three screenshots on my phone while we're live. Mm -hmm. And then I just save those, you know, over the years. And I, I used also, I used to do what you're doing. I used to put them in a, um, like a grid and then mm -hmm. I would just check, like I'd have a grid in my pad. I used the same sheet every week and I would just mm -hmm. check who came on this week and some, and mm -hmm. then I began to see a pattern of certain people coming on every week the same people right right and then yeah and then across the top i would put which show was it or which guest it was i kind of stopped doing that um once we went to zoom because it was just too busy you know mm -hmm. and i had to keep mm -hmm. my eyes in the in the camera so doing all of that so now i just find it's just easier if i just take my phone and just take a picture right yeah all right, well, I'm going to let you go, but I wanted to say that because I did have a meeting with Ajwa yesterday about this. And I was okay. unfortunate. I did say Ajwa and Doretha, right? Right, you did. Okay, I'm what's, just making sure because every time people say it's me. What's, what's Ajwa's phone number? Uh, hold on. What's the last four digits? Hold on. 
I have her name spelled wrong in my phone, so it's hard for me to find her. I'm going to have to get it when she comes back because I, I can't find her in my phone. I have her name spelled so many different ways. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, here it is. Uh, 954. Mm-hmm. 651. Okay. 
So Peter, you know, the speed of the leader is the speed of the group. So I decided to get, bring me a cup this time. It's early, it's early over here and then in Chicago there. I'm saying it is cold. So what are you drinking? <laughs> Just a cup of coffee. <laughs> It's not love your hair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm tempted. So every 10 years, I redo stuff. So over 10 years ago, I decided this do. So for the next 10 years, I'm tempted either to do that or to do the twist like, like he has. That's so funny. Oh, and you know, I really think it would be beautiful on you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. And I may go back to my twist. We'll, we'll, so we'll talk on Sunday, so. Uh, have you all seen? I got some products for y'all if y'all need them. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the power of the subconscious mind is working <laughs> uh, but you know what though I keep saying this one thought begets can, can you all see that that's uh, what you? I might go back to <laughs> is that, oh, okay that's you that yeah. beautiful. oh wow but I, I, it's a little few, few more years on me now though <laughs> it has to be a little different that's pretty Hey, hey guys, I'm gonna... You're sideways, Galen. I know. I okay, okay, okay. So the Black Friday, I added a code. I figured it out. I'm learning my way here. But um, added a code that says Black Friday. So that's all you have to say um, when you show, when you talk about the special. And it's good until December 1st. You're the best, Laverne. I'm trying to be the thank you. Thank you, Laverne. Alrighty, so all right, so over here. Laverne, would you mind uh, putting the order of the show in the chat like you usually do? Absolutely. I thought this is a masterclass. You don't need me. Just in case, it's always helpful just to be able to okay. like, drag the glance awesome. over. And I'm saying I wait till um, Facebook goes live, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, there it is in the chat, the flow of the show. Okay, how does that look? Looks good. Better. Yeah, it looks better. Did you guys get the hub the hub talent um, information? Yes, thank you. Awesome. And uh, yeah. Okay, is Ajwa calling in? <laughs> sure, I check on her. Um, I'm 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 getting ready to call in right now. And it's tomorrow or today.
Caitlin, smile. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing multiple things here. That's quite all right. We're going live in a minute. Actually, two minutes. Oh, you move. That's what it was. <clears throat> yep, it's gonna be a great show. Great, great, great. One thing begets another. Laverne, are you logged in as me on Facebook? If you are, mm -hmm. can you make sure that you click the three little dots and make sure it's public and not for me only? Okay. I yeah, I can't do it. Um, but what happens is that that's what inhibits the going live. So what I learned, what I'm learning for the benefit of everybody, when I clear my history, I'm realizing that's what happens. It clears out my settings. Good question, uh, Doretha. Live, live. Are we live? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Think and Grow Rich Mastermind Show. Actually, we're the Think and Grow Rich Master Class show. Good morning to those of you who are watching live. My name is Dr. Peter A. James. I am the high performance coach helping you to shift your mindset. But today we have a master class and we have a phenomenal show with our phenomenal host panelists. Can't wait to dive into this today because today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about the brain, the brain. So if you are watching here on Facebook Live or if you are watching here with us on Zoom or even blog talk radio, please take a moment to dive on into this conversation about the brain, how the brain is such a phenomenal tool for you in your, in your life on a day in and day in, day in, day in and day out basis for sure. But without further ado, I wanna just dive into this conversation and introduce our distinguished panelists that you all know so well. And let's begin with Miss Sula to Ursula Odom. Ursula, good morning to you, first of all. And then I wanna ask you to introduce yourself, but also tell me when I talk about this chapter on the brain, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Good morning. Yes, I am Ursula Odom, CEO of Sula2, and we make old, new, and everything we do in that we capture those stories about you, and we bring them back 
and share them with the world. That's what we do in any form that we can, from videos to books to legacy walls. And so when I think about the brain, it's all encompassing because the brain controls everything as far as I see it. Because from physical to emotional to um, talent, it's all there. And I'm looking forward to having a, having a conversation about that this morning. Ooh, already, already a lot, a lot of stuff there, Ursula, with the talent and the depth of this. We're going we're gonna to go deep into the brain this morning. And um, someone has already injected into my brain that we maybe we need to talk about telepathy a little bit later on in our conversation. But uh, Mr. Galen Bingham, good morning to you, sir. Definitely tell the audience who you are, but then also tell us your thoughts about the brain. Yeah, so good morning. My name is Galen Bingham. I am the CEO of Kill Global Coaching and Consulting. I help leaders bake success into their work and life. And this is a topic that actually extends for me beyond this book. Uh, I've just I've really come to admit to myself that the more that I learn about the brain, the less I actually know. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But um, there is a part of uh, our knowledge, uh, there's a part of how our brain works that we just have to surrender to. And the more we believe we understand everything that's, that's working for us and everything that's working against us, the more that we think we know what those things are, the less we can actually function because there's so much that we don't know. <laughs> So uh, I'm really excited about this, uh, as I am with every conversation, and uh, I just encourage everyone to grab a book and strap and strap in. <laughs> when, when you said that, Galen, it made me think that our brains, no pun intended, have a mind of their own, <laughs> and it's uh, it's interesting because you know I could go to sleep and in the morning be thinking about something that I went to sleep thinking about or was reading before I went to bed or a movie that I watched before I went to bed. And the brain just kind of takes it from there and just manifests it in some form or fashion overnight while we're mm -hmm. sleeping, right? Go figure. But Miss Ann, um, I know you are really passionate about the brain. You have heard you, you and I have had conversations about what we inject into it. Definitely, uh, of course, you probably need no introduction, however, let our audience know who you are and give us your initial thoughts on the brain. Ann McNeil, the master wealth builder, helping <laughs> you to build a stronger and wealthier business and life and in, actually in every area of your life. And I help entrepreneurs get greater clarity in their highest income producing areas of their business and their life. Napoleon Hill shares with us, and this is the first thing that comes to my mind about the brain. He says that greatness is the ability to first recognize, second, the power of my own brain, embrace it, and then use it. And that really, for me, epitomizes this, this, this whole subject we're going to discuss today and I just cannot wait to get started. So <laughs> Ann McNeil, the master builder. Thank you. Good stuff. We're going to we're going to dive on in. But first, uh, I want to look at all of these principles, all of these steps in this in this uh, in this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, that we dive into every single week at this time. Definitely, for those of you this is your first time watching, please don't be a stranger. Join us um, on a regular basis. But Ursula, I, I want to go back to you really quick, and maybe you can introduce these these principles, these steps to us and to the audience, and and maybe give us a little reason why they are so. This book is so important to to new readers. Some say that when you use a coach, that you collapse years into days. Think and Grow Rich is a book that collapses years and years and lifetimes into a few pages that we can use as a coach combined with the sessions that happen here on Saturdays. So what are those principles? 
That's what we need to remind ourselves of every week. Even when we dive into one chapter, we need to remember what the others are. And that's what you're about to hear. How does it all fit? So, <laughs> as we wait on these three steps to play. The magic of computers and how sometimes they do not follow instructions. Actually, uh, the, the technology has a mind of its own as well. Or <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> okay, so then it is up to me if it's to be. Chapter one is desire. How bad do you want it? Two, faith. If you don't believe it, your brain won't either. It's the visualization and, and belief in the attainment of desire. Three, auto suggestion. Taking control of your subconscious mind. It's self-administered stimuli, meaning that you can control it. Four, specialized knowledge. Using the talent the abilities, the smarts that the Lord gave you. And the kids would say, use it what you got to get what you want. Four, I mean, five, imagination. Freedom to dream and to create. It's the workshop of the mind. Six, organized planning. The crystallization of desire into action. You can want it all you want, but if you don't take action, what happens? And once you've decided what to do, then, well, I'm sorry, when you've organized the plan, then you've got to decide to actually take action. Lead, follow, or get out of the way. It's the master, mastery of procrastination. Um, number eight, persistence. Hang in there. You can get there. It will happen. You just have to make sure that you don't quit like the person that quit um, three feet from gold. Nine, the power of the mastermind. Persistence creates faith. Faith produces power. And the power is essential for success in the accumulation of money. The power of the mastermind. Ten, the mystery of sex transmutation. And we never can get past that without stumbling. It's the brain. It's the brain. It's the brain. It's muscle memory going, oh, what did you just say? <laughs> the mystery of sex transmutation. And what I say is chase your dreams like you chase the love of your life. <laughs> okay. 11, the subconscious mind. What and whose words are rolling around in your head? 12, the brain, the broadcasting and receiving station of thought. You send and you receive. And 13 is the sixth sense, the most mysterious of them all, but it is a temple of wisdom. So we are talking about step number 12 today, the brain. Good stuff, Ursula. Thank you so much for diving into those 13 steps, ladies and gentlemen. If you have never had a chance to peruse the pages of this phenomenal text, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, please pick one up. It's Black Friday. You could pick one up this weekend and going into the holiday season, you can give it as gifts. We'll have a link for it in the chat shortly. Dive on in and you'll really kind of uh, grasp what Ursula was just talking about with those 13 steps. Also, those of you who are watching our audience members, please don't hesitate to join us in this conversation. Inject some powerful questions or comments that will definitely help build on this conversation. And we already have one from Stephen A. Stephen, thank you so much for the question. And you asked about the difference between the brain and the mind. And so I'll even take a first stab at it, and then I'm gonna pass the baton over to Galen really quick. And the brain is actually the physical manifestation, the, 
what's inside of your skull, your cranium there. That's the brain, the physical part of it. The mind is probably more what we are referring to when we're thinking about the, our thought, our perceptions, our imagination, your determination, um, all the thinking, the, the, what really goes on in order for you to take action and do accomplish the things that you need to. That's what's going on in your mind. So there definitely, definitely is a, a differentiation there, Stephen. So thank you so much for diving in first with that powerful, powerful question. Galen, but that was a pretty deep already. We, we're going deep already. What are your thoughts on those differences there moving forward? Yeah, you know, I, I'll tell you, this has been <clears throat> a focus of study uh, of mine for several years. And I've actually spent uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to research and determine the answer uh, to that very question. And mm -hmm. so I, I'm going to give that answer to our audience for free. So here's the answer. You might want to take, um, take some notes. Uh, the answer is, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I have no idea the difference between the brain and the mind. I think what you said was, was dead on. Um, but the thing that I'm latching on to is the fact that I don't have to understand mm -hmm. the difference. Uh, what I do need to understand is how do I activate, uh, whether it's the brain or the mind, how do I activate what I have to what uh, or Ursula said, how do I activate what I have? to uh, achieve what I am trying to achieve. And this book really does outline those steps beautifully. And uh, there's actually this, this, this uh, on page 221, it talks about the greatest forces are intangible. Uh, we get so mesmerized as Napoleon Hill uh, uh, articulates here, we get so mesmerized by those things that we can see and those physical things that are in front of us and the things that we want to quote unquote think about that uh, we don't pay enough attention to those things that we don't understand that we can't see that just seem to work uh, and how do you activate those and, and, and those um, those assets and um, time has proven that those are the things that have the biggest impact um, I can get into this deeper and I will a little bit later on, but I, I want to turn this back on to you. Good stuff. Good stuff, Kayla. We're going we're gonna to dive in even further. Great conversation already. Great discussion. Yeah, Stephen even um, piggybacked on that and said that mind is really where the, the differentiation is between that conscious and that subconscious. Subconscious, of course, being another chapter in Think and Grow Rich. Miss Ann McNeil, this conversation between brain and the mind, what does it conjure up in you? As you come off of mute, yes, ma'am. Yes, <laughs> I was laughing so hard, I had to literally mute myself because Galen hit the nail on the head. And I think for me, the difference is whatever it means to each of us receiving the question, right? Mm. So for me, it really becomes a matter of, like Napoleon Hill tells us about the brain itself, viewing it as a broadcasting station and a receiving station for thought. But when you dig into that question a little bit more about what is it and what's the difference, when you think about the fact that your brain is actually sending your creative imagination is actually forming and receiving to give us the manifestation. And then you get into naturally, the, the, the principle we discussed previously was the power of that auto-suggestion and that self-talk. So coming to his question, I go back to what I opened the program with and Napoleon Hill talked about greatness being for each of us, the ability to recognize the power of your own brain, and this is to the person asked the question. And then in that, being able to embrace that power and use it and your own brain and your own mind, that mind having a conscious and a subconscious to it, but how do you use it? And that's really what I'd like for us to discuss as relates to the question. So let me, let me just go to the how-to as we go on to other co-hosts. How do you actually use it though? See that 
I think is um, the real question when Aristotle and, and you know, and um, Socrates talked about know thyself and even the word tells us to know thyself and knowing thyself is really learning to understand how do you use your own mind. So let me talk about how I use my mind as we kick this off. Starting with the desire. What I'm learning from these principles is that everything is built on that desire principle. Because in order for me to activate my own mind, I must have a desire, a definite purpose, a group of definite chief aims in order to magnify, I call it fanning the flame. So just imagine that your mind, your brain, if you want to call it that, is call it like a, 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 a wood or paper that you want to set on fire, you want to magnify, you want to energize, pour some fuel on it, and then fan, 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 fan the flame with this imagination and this creativity, but all focus on whatever it is that you desire. And then from the desire, right going straight through the six steps to riches. Because if I know what it is I want, if I'm clear about what I'm going to do to get it, I'm a contractor by profession, that's what I do for a living. If I know exactly what I'm going to do, if I know exactly when I want it by, doesn't mean I'm gonna get it by then, but I have a definite date and I'm willing to be held accountable. And then number four, I have a definite set of plans that goes to organized planning. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna wrap it up into an affirmation as step number five. And the power of the auto suggestion says, I am going to recite that a minimum of twice a day, once upon a time, once when I arise in the morning, and then once when I go to bed at night. And to me, that is how I crystallize, if you will, the difference in my mind and my brain and how I use it. Thank you. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, thank you so much for that little bit of clarification there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> which was very deep, of course, there. And, um, you know, Ursula, we're going to uh, go back to you and uh, talk a little bit about this brain and how we're using it. Miss Ann said some things there about what we're injecting into it. And I'll even talk about myself and then I'll ask you about yourself, Ursula, if you don't mind. Um, I'm very futuristic thinking. I'm always, I'm, I'm easy, it's easy for me to strategize and plan. So when I work with clients, that comes very naturally to me. I have to be very conscious about remaining in the present, telling my brain, my mind to, hey, be here in the moment, enjoy this moment, um, real, realize this moment to a certain extent. And so I, I, I practice different strategies, which, whether it's affirmations, meditation, or even just being quiet in order to do so in order. And I inject that type of stimuli into my brain intentionally. So I guess my question to you, Ursula, is what are some things that you inject into your brain in order to accomplish your goals, your dreams, your desires as well? Well, mine goes back to my grandmother as does most things in my life. <laughs> Somehow, some way, she got me to believe that the Bible was sacred. I know that sounds a little strange, but um, meaning that if I had a bad dream or if life was not treating me well and I was just afraid of what was under the bed, I put a Bible under my pillow and the next day it would be all okay. I believe that as a child. And if it gets rough to this day, I might just do the same thing. Put that Bible under there and somehow the forces go to work if on nothing but your own brain. So I actually use that in business and thinking about the question and anticipating having to answer that. I thought about the fact that when I was in um, computer programming, I would have this problem. And, and you know, if you know anything about computers, you know, it problems can present themselves and, and be very adamant. I mean, just do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again until you break that cycle. And one particular time I remember where 
some action was happening and people couldn't figure it out. And I used my creative, my creative imagination um, to think about it, went to sleep on it, woke up and said, you know what's happening? This record is annihilating that record and it's annihilating that record. There are three transactions that are coming through, but we're only seeing one. So what's going on in the background seems invisible or is invisible to our, our analytical process. And they laughed at me, girl, no, that's not happening. Guess what? It did. Transaction one came in, transaction came in, transaction two came in and just deleted the first one. And the third one came in and deleted the, 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 the second one. So the first two people didn't know was coming through until I recreated the problem. So um, thinking on it is a real thing for me. To this day, if I have something that I'm working on that um, I'm tired or I just don't seem to be getting through or or I just need something, a, a little bit of mm, to go with it, I go to sleep <laughs> and think about it. Because I know when my eyes are closed, my brain is in action. And I just I just work with it. It really, it really is. It's interesting. Uh, we've talked about it this month as we've gone through the brain, how it's, it, we are often careless about what we allow to be injected into our brains. We are, um, whether it's the radio, the TV, or some other stimuli uh, that we are not conscious about. I've found myself lately being very intentional. So if I'm driving in the car, I'm not really turning the radio on as quickly as I used to. I'm, I'm good with silence nowadays because I know I'm cognizant um, of what the radio injects into our minds. And is that always positive? I'm afraid to say that most times it's negative, mm -mm. right? In fact, I'm, I'm real happy you said that because I'm almost doing an experiment right now because um, it's football season and we are locked down and, and people want to watch football and what have you. And I, I don't use, okay, how do I put this? I don't look at TV except what, at something I want to look at, meaning that the on-demand works for me because I can binge watch studying something or that I'm interested in. But having to, I went out and bought one of these things that would allow you to have local channels and what have you. And I sit there and I watch what they do. They, they sell to you 50% of the time. And you can't move. I mean, you can, you can get out of the room, but the point is those commercials are just constant and over and over and over again. I don't, I don't unplug that thing. <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's not gonna do that to me. And I, I'm like you, I will not have anything going on um, when I'm sleeping and I don't know what it is. Yeah, no, that's good. Not gonna do good, it. good stuff. Galen, the, um, the brain has a tendency to pick up on stuff that we don't even know it's picking up on. So what are you injecting into your brain, sir? Yeah, you know, gosh, this is this is gonna sound like it's the total opposite of what uh, you and Ursula have just been talking mm -hmm. about. But I usually try to reach out to as many different places as possible um, because, uh, you know, there is a, um, a, a concept from one place might help me understand something in another place. Mm -hmm. And I find that I tend to be uh, really, really good at synthesizing. Um, and, you know, so even just today, I, I was taking some notes just as I was listening to you guys already, and I was thinking about uh, these um, other areas uh, that I'm much more familiar with and how they might help me understand the brain and how the brain works and the power of this intangible, uh, these intangible forces that uh, Napoleon Hill talks about. And when we talk about sports teams, like Ursula was talking about, we always talk about their statistics, their athletic ability, whatever the case might be. But then we say, but then they've got this chemistry, right? This, hmm. this, this extra thing that we can't really describe. And chemistry is what makes the difference between success and failure. Uh, when we talk about um, uh, Christianity, we, we talk about all these scripture, we talk about all these, these platitudes, but then we say, but then there's this spirit that yeah. we can't really describe or explain, but that's the real power uh, associated with, with this idea of Christianity. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm 
fortunate to spend some time this past weekend with my family and and uh, my daughter got to hang out with her grandmother and grandfather and so they were doing some cooking and they all had the recipe and we were following the recipe then my mom would say that you got to put some love into it you got to put this extra thing that's not in the recipe and that's what makes the difference so um for me i you know i just i i try to expand the avenues that i pull information from uh you know the music i listen to is pretty eclectic um but i I spend a lot of time with jazz but just i try to just learn from as many different places as i can because those principles those concepts that i pick up might help me understand something that i'm struggling with later on may i respond to that (laughs) you actually proved the point because you're in total control of what you put into your brain And if you had something constantly interrupting you while you were observing this process around that, you know, kitchen table as they were cooking, you know, you would be, you would be distracted. So you control what goes into your brain. And that's what I was talking about. Being able to decide that I want to look at next, 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 well, okay. I don't want to advertise this. (laughs) Look at something and, and, and pick that I want to look at everything having to do with Mary McLeod Bethune. I don't want to hear anything else. I want to hear that because that's what I'm studying that day. Or if I just want to binge watch and watch a love story, I want to do that too, because that feeds, you know, my, my sense of calm, but it's still me in control of the environment. And that's what we were talking about. And that's what I heard you say, being in control. Yeah. And, and, and then also to, to that point, to that point, Ursula, I mean, um, you know, part, part of the study that I've done suggests that uh, every stimuli that we receive, we, we, we hang on to, right? We, we never, ever lose anything. It gets filed. It gets stored. My, my dad used to say a lot, uh, when you have an experience, file it and keep it for later, right? Uh, it, but we just never know when we're going to need that thing. And so even when I'm sitting and listening to the radio, you know, listen to something that my daughter wants to listen to, right? You, typically, it's not jazz. <laughs> but listening to something that she wants to listen to, yeah, I'm conscious of the lyrics. I'm conscious of what they're talking about. But I'm even open to there might be a way that they're phrasing the lyrics that I might need to have that phrasing when I'm explaining a leadership concept to another client. And mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm just, I, I'm just open to the idea that everything is going to work to my good. Everything is going to somehow contribute to what I'm needing to do later on. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just open to that. I'm open to the, I'm open to, yeah, I'm open to the magic. Okay. To that point, and I promise I'll, I'll give it back to you in a minute, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, But you just said something that is um, an example of how I use the brain. Um, When someone says something to me, a lot of times I may not have a solution for them. They may be asking me for a solution and I have none at that point, or they're telling me about something that they do. I systematically will say to them, well, what that means is now that I know, I'll file, like you said, I'll file it away. And I know that at some point when because it's like the blue car. Now that I know this piece of information, when when the situation arises where that that situation that that information can be repeated or used, then I'll bring it out, and I may be able to make a connection between people that I would not have made that connection with, or two, or between the two of them, if I had not heard it. But I had no solution yeah. at the moment, and I knew it, and I told the person I have no solution, but I'm filing away now that I know it. There you go. That's it. That's it. Hey, I'm reminded, and then we're we're, we're going to end this one-on-one conversation. Right? <laughs> but uh, but man, you know, um, I'm I'm reminded of uh, I had I watched. Um, there's a documentary on Quincy Jones. Oh and yeah. And I'm I'm very very big into music, and he ha- he happened to play a bit with Miles Davis, who's another you know member of my Invi- Invisible Board of Directors. But Quincy Jones. He was, he had this conversation about this piece that he was, that he composed. And he said, you know, I only write 80% because I want to leave 20% for God to come in the door. 
mm. because that's when the magic, that's where the magic happens and people pay for the magic. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is just so powerful. And, you know, I, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of uh, training with leaders. I do a lot of training programs, leadership talks, that kind of thing. And so many times people are asking me, what are the words that you're going to say? Give me a script of the words you're going to use. Well, I can give you 80%, but I'm, not, I'm going to leave 20% for the conversation to evolve based upon what's needed. And I think that that's, that's, that's how the brain works. You know, if, if we only hang our head on that, that we totally understand, then um, I think we're missing the magic. We're missing, we're missing that space for God to come into the conversation. And that's what, that's when the magic happens. And this is some magic that we've are trying to recreate this morning. We're, we're hoping that this conversation manifests and evolve. Miss Ann, I guess it's time for you and I to have a conversation amongst <laughs> ourselves as well. And, but, but one of the things that I think about, as Galen has even mentioned about the spirit and, and uh, like minds, there's some magic that happens when all minds in the room are on the same page. Um, I'm looking at this definition of telepathy, which is the purported vicarious transmission of information from one person to another without using any known human sensory channels or physical interaction. So whether it's the, the spirit as, as Galen had mentioned or the masterminds that we are so um, uh, privy to, what happens, what's this thing that the mind does when you have a friend or a partner who's close by and, and another partner or a team and we're all on the same page. What happens? Any thoughts on that, Ms. Ann? <laughs> oh, 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 you talking to me? I'm asking <laughs> you, yes, you are the master builder. So I think you can master our, our way through that question there, right? <laughs> well, actually, if you go to page 220, um, yeah. Uh, the author says thought manifests itself as electrical energy within the human brain. Only highly intensified or energized thought impulses are transmitted. Here we go. Right. From one brain to another through this mysterious and still not understood process, thought which has been modified or stepped up by any of the major emotions is the only type of thought which passes from one brain to another through the broadcasting machinery of the human brain. And I, I shared that, <laughs> it, it's interesting you asked that question and I had this marked in my book, because to me that explains the question you're asking about the power of the mastermind mm -hmm. when you have a group of minds, even two minds, and going to what Galen talked about, when you have two minds or brains, you actually have a third. That's the power, that's the magic that the artists have tapped into, that the musicians have tapped into, that the theologians have tapped into, that business owners and masterminders have tapped into. And so that would be my, uh, my response to your question, uh, Peter, because again, I keep going back to that's where the power and the greatness is. But let's stay on that a little bit, um, and if you could um bless the audience with how you manifest that in your own life because they might i love to listen i'm not even going to say they i might need some examples on how to to get that powerful connection so that all minds are moving in the same direction how do you how do you allow that to manifest in your own life well actually for me i start with <laughs> what is it that i desire is it money? Sure. Is it a product? Is it a service? Is it a person? 
Now I'm going to tell this story and she knows who I'm talking about. We will not call anybody's name, <laughs> but in my organization, I had a need for a certain skill set that I did not have. Nobody on my team had. So we started with desire. I started with desire. I wrote that desire in great detail of exactly what type of skill I wanted. And for me, going back to the power of these principles, Napoleon Hill and Clement Stone, when we do the research, they would go back and forth about what's the most powerful principle. Is it desire and faith? This is Hill. Or is it the positive mental attitude? Positive. So we can have individuals in our circle that are skilled, but they don't have the positive mental attitude that creates that glue. Yeah. So for me, what I do is I go back to desire and I write what I desire. Then I go to that next step and it, it is, it is it's not rocket science, it's right here in the book, six steps to riches and riches does not have to be money. So for me, that's how I use that. Now, naturally, I met the person, I tried to employ them, they were not having it, they were just too busy. But the universe, the spirit, God created an opportunity for that person unknowingly to join us. Now, this applies in our lives in every single area. It doesn't matter if it's a mate or a child that may be wayward. And some people are, are like, okay, well, how, what do I do with that? Work within. See, for me, I work on myself. For those of you that know me, I mean, it's a daily joy, literally. Can't wait to wake up. But I literally sit for ideas like the Napoleon Hill tells us about the guy was paid literally millions of dollars to do nothing but sit for ideas. But how many of us are willing, Peter, yeah. to tap into our brain and literally have a desire and then sit in quiet and record the ideas that come so we're broadcasting and sending. So I'm sending out my desire. The universe through all of you, masterminders, right? You're sending back to me without any words ever spoken. Yeah. That goes to your mental telepathy. Yeah. How do you explain it? I have no idea. I just, going back to Gayla's point, I don't know how the brain works. I just know it works. But only if I tap into my desire because it cannot work, Peter, Galen, Ursula, and thank you for joining us, Begin. But it cannot work if I don't desire anything. Just imagine. Payroll. Didn't have it. Desired it. It showed up. Small amount, large amount, larger, larger, larger amount. But what if I didn't have a desire? So, so, so I hope that's helpful in yeah. anybody that's listening. What is it that you want? by when and what are you willing to do when we, we want to make absolutely clear we're not talking about woo 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 just sit here and don't don't <laughs> don't get up and move your feet by faith so those are just some thoughts in terms of what i do peter some deep thoughts from ann mcneil those of you who need a little reiteration of it do you have that belief that desire for whatever it is that you desire to accomplish or want to accomplish do you have that deep level of desire and motivation. And then, as she also mentioned, are you willing to sit in that desire, in that place in order for it to manifest? Desiring it enough, but also the willingness to sit. And I, what I like about this is the, and what, going back to what she said earlier um, in her statement was the electricity as the text talks about the electrical energy that only exists in the human mind. And, and, and I think that is also probably the answer to my question when you have that mastermind, when you have that team, when you have that church who are all on the same wavelength, that electricity moves in the same way. I also think about it 
as Miss Ann had mentioned about in your mate source or, uh, or partner. The, uh, the book talks about sex transmutation. Think about it from that perspective and that electricity that you know that happens when you find that right partner. You can't even describe it, but it's there, right? Ursula, you know, as you think about this telepathy conversation, I know you are really connected within our history. Um, what does this scream to you? Well, when you talk about telepathy, telepathy mm -hmm. however you pronounce that word, <laughs> um, one of the things I've often said is that um, life is so fantastic, I cannot say what does or does not exist with any kind of definitiveness, but that invisible thing is real. I've had it play out too many times in my life for me to say that it doesn't exist. And um, you mentioned electricity. I use somewhat of a similar, similar example when people say, well, that's not real. I don't believe in that. I say, well, sit on your phone and see if it doesn't ring. You may not see that happening, but um, it'll get to your phone. That invisible energy, whatever that is, it gets to your phone. And I think we're, as a um, society, believe in that which we make but that which we do not understand, we don't believe. And I think that's where we're, we're losing our abilities to, to tap into that infinite source. Um, and as recently as yesterday, uh, I thought about something and someone, and it was in a form of what can I do to help that person? And then my dog, as I, as I, put the phone, got up to put my phone um, back on the charger. I stood up and the phone rang and my daughter was talking and thinking about the same person. We were working on the same problem at the same time. And literally she was dialing the phone as I was putting it back. And so how do you explain that? You don't, you just go with it. We often like to call it being on the same wavelength. But yeah. But I think that's just the surface statement. I think that's there's really a lot of truth to being on the same page with like-minded individuals. And, and I think it's so important as this text talks about the power of the mastermind, surrounding yourselves with like-minded individuals who are on the same trajectory, same path in order to accomplish those desires, those dreams, and, and those things you're motivated about. Okay, I'm, so I'm going to say something that's a little bit off <laughs> or out of character for me. I'll put it like that. Um, there is a, a physical truth that I am aware of for young people's young women when they're of childbearing age, that if they're around each other long enough that they become cycled together. Mm -hmm. So there is something going on that, that, that put all of these people that are in, in um, a group together on the same time schedule, the same wavelength. How does that happen? What is that? I've seen that I mean, happen in my house. You know? I've seen that happen in my own house. <laughs> Peter. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'd be <laughs> going back to the brain and the power of thought. Um, I want to just go back to something we discussed before the program started. I just put a link in the chat. Thank you, Ursula, because I think uh, every woman who's listening to this can say, actually, why don't we take a survey? For those of you who are on in the chat, can you just say me too, men or women, based upon what Ursula said? And uh, Peter came and gave his amen. Um, <laughs> just say, just say um, me too in the chat whether you're live or, or, or as a part of the Zoom. But I, before we start wrapping up, I, I just put a link in the chat. And Laverne, if you can help me share this. Uh, while we were sharing, I did find the link. Uh, and the link, we talked about the power of thought and how powerful it is. And so in the chat, I placed the link from a study that was done. And for those of you who are listening, uh, we do a pre-show conversation before we come on to to share with all of you and in preparation for that show we talked about the fact that 
one thought begets another thought. So um, Gala made a comment and his comment reminded me, that this is the power of thought. One thought begets another thought that begets another thought that begets another thought. And if we're not careful, each of these thoughts can take us spiraling down or, or, or like a ladder stair step going up. And so I shared um, this thought of the power of thought that I read or somewhere about the power of an experiment that was done, which I have it here. And it says that through the 1980s, Dr. Um, Masaru, Masaru Emoto performed a series of experiments observing the effect of words, prayers, music, and the environment on crystalline structures of water. So what we were talking about, and this is, this is going back to the power of the brain and the power of our thoughts. The experiment showed how positive thoughts impacted a body of water in a positive, beautiful way. The opposite experiment showed negative, benign, nasty thoughts, defeat thoughts, doubts and fears. Put in the water, no, nobody touched the water, nothing but thoughts. Created negative energy in the water. And through this experiment, they were able to recognize the difference. Now, I just wanted to share that because when, <laughs> when we started talking about all these different things, I'm not going to repeat them. Imagine what's happening in each of your mind, your body, your spirit, as you allow all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of words, all kinds of music, a kind of activity, yours and others, to impact you without your permission and or knowledge. So I just wanted to just share that, uh, Peter, because I think it's so powerful before we wrap this chapter up to go to infinite intelligence. I think that it's, it's, emp it's empowering that we understand. Now, you don't have to do anything about it, but you cannot say you did not know mm -hmm. why you're in the state you're in Mm. And you also cannot say you don't know how to get out because every single Saturday we come on and we share with you powerful success principles. And I'm going to wrap up with this, Peter, in preparation for this, I was listening to some recordings, a lot, a lot of different people. And all of a sudden I realized that everybody that I was listening to was a student of this philosophy. Let me say it again. Everybody that I was listening to was a student of this for Earl Nightingale, was a friend of Napoleon Hills. Jim Rowan came out of Napoleon Hill. Name anybody you know that you listen to or watch. If you go back into their life and their history, you're going to find this book, you're going to find Napoleon Hill or Laws of Success. I am listening to the scrolls, the greatest salesman, the 10 scrolls. Og Mandino is one of my favorite authors. He worked for Clement Stone and Napoleon Hill. So um, this week I was listening to um, Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield worked for, I just found this out this week, and that's what put me on this study. Jack Canfield worked for Clement Stone. Clement Stone was the back, if you will, bone in business later in life for Napoleon Hill. What's the point that I'm making? Your brain, you have greatness in you. But the question is, will you recognize it, embrace it, and use it? So thank you, Peter.
Wow, God, good stuff. Um, yeah, you had me going in a hundred different directions. You had my brain going in a hundred different directions because I started thinking about those authors that I read, those individuals that I listen to on a regular basis, and and who what their brain lineage is to a certain extent. And and then you also finished it off with the, um, the state that you are in or have been in recently, especially in 2020, when there's been so much stimuli coming at us left and right and everywhere, it can put us in a depressive state. If so you now, let it. If you, if, let if you let it. Right, right, right. Exactly. If you let it. So now what are you doing to change that narrative? What are you looking to inject into your brain in order to change that narrative consistently, regularly, intentionally, right? And so that's what's so important now moving forward. You can't change the past, but now moving forward, what are you deciding to do? Galen, Yeah, I know that you're in on this conversation wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were asking me because I <laughs> But also tell us about this annual meeting uh, a little later on as well. Yeah. So, yeah, a couple, couple things. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking a lot about, because obviously my, my, my brain drifts to leadership pretty easily. It doesn't take much. Uh, a stiff breeze and I'm there. <laughs> um, but one of the, one of the quotes that, um, that I enjoy is by this guy, John Buckham, who is an iconic leader in Canada. Um, and he said the task of leadership is not to put uh, is not to put greatness into humanity, but to elicit it because greatness is already there. And so, and, and, and for me, that means for my leaders as well as for me as a person, if I am uh, my my job, my mode should be to always be trying to find what's the greatness in all of these areas of life. How can I get? the information that I need from all of these places that already have the greatness there. Uh, and I think a great example of that is this annual meeting that we talk about every, every week uh, where uh, like-minded, uh, like-minded people will get together and they will all converge on the same room at the same time uh, in Boca Raton uh, with, the, the, with the specific purpose to help you manifest and, 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 um, put some detailed plans around how you can achieve these goals that you've said that you desire. Uh, that is absolutely the most productive use of your time. Uh, that's the most productive use of uh, the, um, I, I think it's like 150 bucks uh, that you normally would have to spend. And I hear rumblings that there's even a, a Black Friday special that if you uh, act now or act this weekend or act before the date the deadline you're going to get this as an at an incredibly incredibly reduced rate but um i think the power of just getting around like-minded people who are all focused on helping you number one achieve the goals that you say that you're trying to achieve and then number two hold you accountable for executing against those goals uh, because let's face it uh, a dream without a a dream without a plan is just a hallucination. Uh, and we don't have time for, we, you know, no one has time to be hallucinating. So they're gonna help you articulate your goal. They're gonna help you put plans in place to execute against your, your goal. And then they're gonna hold you accountable um, because when you come back the following year, uh, before you start talking about these new plans that you have, they're gonna ask you, you know, hold up, wait a sec. What did you do with these last goals that you told us about? The previous year and if you can't address what you've done against that plan it's going to be really really hard to um, sell them or convince them that but these new plans are actually going to happen so uh, i would absolutely encourage everyone uh, to commit the time uh, commit the mental space uh, commit the small amount of money that it's going to require for you to be a part of this annual meeting for your life um, and do you want to talk more about this, uh, this special pricing uh, that, that we were talking about before? Absolutely, absolutely, Galen. I am, I am convicted. That's what I am. 
I, I am convicted. Um, last week, we had a phenomenal guest on, Mr. Valencia Gibbs, and she talked about her experience with our Clarity Mastermind. And the more she talked, the more I realized that I am robbing people by not sharing this annual meeting and the different products and services that we provide. Because while listening to her, I realized it's not about me and any limitations, doubts, or fears that I have. It really is about service in and for the benefit of others and creating a place for people to come. So we have created a Black Friday special. This special will only last until the 1st of December. So even if you are wavering and you're not sure, register anyway. Register anyway. So we're going to bring up the, um, the flyer for that um, Black Friday special for this event that Galen talked about. And Galen, uh, thank you uh, for volunteering to be one of our co-hosts during that day as a table host. And for those of you that have absolutely no idea what we're talking about, when Galen shared what we do there, it's a place for you to sit, bring your life in writing, exactly what you say you're going to do. But what did you do in 2020 in each area of your life? What are you planning on doing in 2021 through 25, through 35, through 2045? I'm working on what will I do when I'm 92 and the plan is already written, right? Mm -hmm. It was written 40 years ago. I'm in my 40th year right now. And as I read Napoleon Hill's words, and I read where he talked about 20 years. Well, I've done 20 years now twice, right? And so many others have done the same thing. When you listen to Bob Proctor and Les Brown and all of these greats, they're no greater than you. They just had a plan. They wrote it down. They surrounded themselves with individuals who are willing to hold them accountable. We are willing to hold you accountable, but only if you show up right? Only if you show up. So Laverne, if you have the, uh, the JPEG, you can share it. If, if we're not able to share it, then you can go to our website at internationalmasterminders with an S dot com. I'd also like for you to encourage all of you to join our Facebook group. That's the Think and Grow Rich International Mastermind Association. Join our Facebook group and participate with us as Every single Friday, 52 weeks at 7 a.m. Eastern time, we hold each other accountable for one goal and reading one thing. And I'm saying this because you don't have to wait until the end of the year for accountability. We come on here every single Saturday. You can join us here and you can join us on Friday. We give you so many opportunities to join us. And with coaches like Peter and Galen and Pekin and Ursula, you have no excuse to say you don't know where to go and get help. Everybody's gonna put their information in the chat and on the Facebook. So if you're looking for someone to help you to achieve your goals, if it's about leadership, you must connect with our co-host Galen Bingham. If it's about a better quality of life in your business, you must, you must connect with Peter. And of course, if you have anything you want to share with the world, whether it's audio, video, a document regarding your history and also your current and future, you must connect with Ursula. So again, International Masterminders with an S dot com. That's the Black Friday special. I'm not going to give you the price and you have to look it up for yourself because if I tell it to you, then we, we listen, it's only good between now and the 1st of December. And after the 1st, it goes back to the regular price. All right. So thank you. Thank you, Galen. And thank you, Peter. Good stuff.
Good stuff. And uh, for those of you who are looking for that flyer, it is in the chat. It is on Facebook Live. The link for that Black Friday special for the annual accountability meeting is there waiting on you. And so are we. We'll be there waiting on you. And I love what Ann just said a little while ago. You can be the Tony Robbins. You can be the Bob Proctor. You can be the Napoleon Hill. But your mind has to be in the right place. And then you have to be able to surround yourself with the right people. Oftentimes we just let circumstance dictate our future. Listen, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I am going to lead my trajectory and I'm gonna begin by using my brain, by surrounding myself with like-minded individuals who are on that same trajectory as well. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't figured it out by now, we have gone over a little bit, but we're on, we're, our wheels are down now. We're looking to conclude this phenomenal conversation. And I want to start off with Ursula. Ursula, let us know how we can stay in touch with you, number one, but also two, what are some aha, something, some aha moments from this conversation today? So I'll do the easy, easy one first. You can reach me at sula2.com and on youtube follow me um subscribe like and and click the bell and if you search for sula space to s-u-l-a space t-o-o -O, i have several things that are going on out there and um as far as today's aha uh -huh, it's all over the place. I mean, it's like your brain's all over the page. It's your, like your brain is everywhere. Yeah. Peter, <laughs> Peter, you said something. Galen, <laughs> Anne is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I have to unpack these as the day goes on because there were so many things Powerful. that were said that were life changing or potentially life changing or at least life affirming. And that's why a lot of times I will go back and re view or re-listen to the day's show because there's so much that comes through that oh I might have missed that and I suggest you do that too good or stuff. Good, stuff, Ur good stuff Ursula thank you so much and encourage the our listeners our audience don't hesitate to go back through to this show or previous shows they're all out there for you Galen how do we get in touch with you but what rose to the surface from this conversation today yeah, you know, I, this show had me with Ursula saying that um, great coaches collapse years into days. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the same is true for all of these books that we're talking about, Napoleon Hill, uh, Clement Stone, uh, I mean, Anthony Rout, all of these, all of these people, they're collapsing years worth of research into days and into, into morsels. Uh, you know, I, I'm Galen Bingham, the leadership strategist. You can, you can connect with me at galen at killglobalcoaching.com. Uh, I'm also releasing a brand new project. Um, it is a brand new podcast. It's called Whiskey, Jazz, and Leadership. It is going to be unlike anything that I've done uh, before, where I'm just going to bring together the three things that I tend to talk about a lot, the, things, the three things that I enjoy. Um, and we're just going to hit people with um, that morsel, that that key uh, distillation of, of knowledge and wisdom. I'm going to bring in my friends. Uh, I've got friends all over the place that do a lot of amazing things, and they're gonna they're gonna share their insights uh, over a glass of whiskey as we listen to jazz. And uh, I'm even going to draft you, Dr. Peter James, to be one of my first guests. So definitely encourage people to check out and look for that for that podcast. Uh, it's definitely on Spotify already, but it's, it's, it's expanding to all these other platforms. And that's what I'm working on right now. What a dangerous conversation, whiskey, jazz, and leadership. I can't wait for it there, Galen and McNeil. How do we stay in touch with you, one, but this was a powerful conversation. I know you got some wor words of wisdom for us, some parting words. I give you, I give you how to to connect with me. You um, know, following Ursula's leadership in regards to building out my YouTube channel, which is uh, y'all continue to pray for me with that <laughs> because it's trial and error. But um, inch by inch, it's about perfect. It's about progress, not perfection. 
according to um, Julia Cameron's words. My, um, you can reach me by text is best if you're interested in getting um, my six keys, which helps you to understand how to use your brain. You can text me at 55678, 55678, and in the message, just put the word and, A-N-N, in quotation. My takeaway, I will end the same way I started because it's very dear to me, the quote. Every single one of you have greatness in you. And Napoleon Hill shares that your greatness is found in your ability to recognize the power of your own mind or brain. Embrace it and use it. Thank you. Good stuff as always, Anne McNeil. Uh, what a phenomenal show, what a powerful show. Listen, I didn't even know the show was going to evolve like this. So to Galen's credit, you know, when when you, we inject a thought and another thought becomes another thought and another idea becomes another conversation, that's what happened today. And I think it manifested some beautiful ideas, goals that we can inject into all of our lives. My name is Dr. Peter A. James. I am the high performance coach. You can reach me at shiftyourmindset.com or, or on any social media platform at Dr. Peter A. James. That's at D-R-P-E-T-E-R-A-J-A-M-E-S. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just been a part of the Think and Grow Rich master class where we come together at the end of every month and on the fifth, on the fourth and fifth uh, Saturday of every month and pontificate on this month's principle. This happened to be the brain today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you were able to glean, take away something that you can apply for your life today, but don't be a stranger. Join us next week, Saturday and every Saturday morning at the same time, same channel and become a part of this mastermind. Yes, you can be a part of this mastermind as well. Don't forget about the links. Don't forget about the Black Friday special for the Think and Grow Rich annual accountability meeting. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe. Take care.